Hello, welcome to day four of Furniture Flip Challenge. This is Kathy Morrison, also known as the Furniture Duchess, live to you from Alpharetta, Georgia, just north of Atlanta. And today is more into decorative finishes. I'll call it decoupage day. So um, I have got this really pretty colorful floral decoupage paper. And as I mentioned before, I wanna put it I'm treating these like little windows. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it in between these, these windows. And so for decoupage work, you need obviously the paper that you're gonna put on. You're gonna need a medium to glue it to the surface and also to go on top of the surface. I'm gonna go ahead and use Mod Podge. There are, every brand of paint's got their own. Uh, you could even use the top coat. Um, I've used this clear coat from Dixie Bell before as a, um, as a medium. So um, that, but that's the idea of what we're gonna do. And I'll take a quick break here because I need my cameraman. We're gonna go ahead and lay the piece down on its back because it's so much easier to do this when you're working on a flat surface facing down. So we'll see you in a minute. Okay. All right, so this is the paper that we're gonna use. And basically when you're doing a decoupage, you're gonna want to, um, this has got a border on it and I um, cut it off off screen on the other one. But basically what you want to do is get in here and place it down on your piece, get it in the crevices. And I usually score it with my fingernail because then it'll leave a mark on where I need to go with my scissors. So I've pressed it down, I've scored it, and then it'll tell me where, when I pick it up, there'll be a crease in the paper. There's another way to do it, um, which is pretty nifty, is if you can get it down here in the groove, then go ahead and, and cut it right with a razor blade. And then um, it'll fit just nice in that, and then you don't have to go through all the cutting nonsense like boom you just come on up cut it you may have some problems in the corners but that's what the scissors are for and you just got to make sure you got it tucked down so you get an even edge in the corner and pretty much then you should be able to go ahead and just pull it apart this is a little um these papers a little um, more robust, you know, they're, they're not gonna tear as easy, um, which is kind of good when you're playing around with it. So, but that's your edge from a razor. Anyway, in the magic of modern science, I've already cut a couple of pieces. And that's basically what we're gonna do. We're gonna slide these suckers right in here. So, in order to do that, the first thing that you do is you get out your glue, and I use a brush, and you want to do a liberal application. You don't want, you know, again, you don't want gunk, you know, drips and chunks and things like that. You want it to be very smooth, but you want to get enough on there that it's going to glue your piece down because you don't want it coming back up. So I, I'm hoping that I'm pretty much gonna cover up these little cracks in here, or at least make them a lot less noticeable. So that's why my original thought was to use a transfer, but the transfer was just way too transparent. And it was showing the lines through it and it just was not good. So anyway, you put the glue down and obviously it goes on white and you wanna make sure you get your corners good so that everything sticks down, but it dries clear. So you get that down then you go back in with your decoupage paper and it's okay to be a little bit larger when you're cutting it because you can always trim it up you know, again, with a razor blade or whatever, with some kind of a trim piece. But if it's too short, that's no good. So too big is better than too little. And you want to smooth it out carefully. This is where um, 
Another thing you can use is, bear with me for a second, pull some of this out, um, is a plastic wrap, saran wrap, whatever you want to call it, and just bunch it up and smooth it out because sometimes your fingers can get sticky from the glue or they can just be abrasive. And what you're trying to do is get the wrinkles out, get it pressed down everywhere so you've got good contact without wrinkles. And that is looking pretty good to me. So you've gotten that part done then very easy you just go on in over the top and paint it with glue or your adhesive medium that you're using and again you want to make sure you get all the surfaces you want to make sure you smooth out the glue so there's no lines that are obvious although i can see lines below from the cracks so we're going to see how this comes out um because the glue's a little bit pulled up in those cracks below the paper these crevices are what i'm referring to and you want to make sure you get it all the way around And it's good to be doing this somewhere where you've got a light source that creates a glare on the piece because it'll show you in that glare kind of what's what's been hit and what's you know what's wet, what's dry, so you make sure that you haven't missed anything. I kind of like that. All right, let's do one more. Go in. So this is what I'm doing on the front. I've got to also decide, am I doing gold or silver on the accents? Cause I am going to do some accents probably on the um, trim and something on the feet. Knowing me, it's probably going to be stripes. I just can't decide. Um, but you know, these are things that as you go along with your piece, you put one thing on, you review it, you look at it, see what you think. You like it, it'll tell you a lot of cases where you're gonna go next. And like I said, there's a drawer that's in the middle here. I've left that off. Um, I've sanded it down like the top. And again, you know, it's it's got wood grain, but it's not the world's prettiest wood grain on it. So um, I'm gonna be doing something over that and it'll probably be matching the top of the piece so that it'll be some cohesiveness to the whole design. All right, we got the back. Oh, see, this is where the glare is good. Cause then you say, oh, there's a dry spot there. And you just wanna make sure. Now this is completely different than doing gold leaf, which I love to do. Gold leaf, you put your glue on, which is a special kind of glue, and you gotta wait till it dries to attack. In this case, you don't have to do that. All right, so you get your paper situated. And the nice thing about this glue and this paper is, again, it's sturdy enough. You can pick it up and reset it if you find that you're off. All right, we got that out. And then here again, you're gonna just press down, making sure there's no wrinkles, unless you want that wrinkly look, and some people do. It's kind of an aged look. And when you're doing this, don't be worried if there are bubbles and wrinkles, because until it dries, the paper's gonna you know, expand a little bit when it's wet, and then it'll contract a little bit when it's dry, so it'll get rid of that, and then yeah. Uh, okay. I like that. And like I said, I got a little bit overage, but when I get done with all of this, I can trim it all up very, very easily. So 
do that. And put the top on. And then we will be just keep on doing this. We got eight little windows here. And then I'll evaluate what it looks like when it's done and see where we're gonna go next on this piece. But I do like a little bit of floral here. I think it's a good look with the pink. Again, I was going back and forth between pink and lavender. I think I made a good decision, but that's the tough thing about doing furniture. You know, every time you start painting, you make a decision and it takes something else out of the mix. So, all right, let's see. And there's a way you can do a little smoothing out of wrinkles and stuff with your paintbrush. And then you're gonna wanna get over to the sink and clean and wash this paintbrush out before it has a chance to dry. And it's a water-based glue, so it'll come out in the sink. Well, it'll come out in water, soap and water, let's put it that way. So. But the big thing I would recommend is when you get done with using your brush, take a baby wipe and clean it off and get most of the glue off because you really don't want to be putting a lot of glue down your sink, down your drain to harden up in your pipes and give you a mess. So that's it. We're going to keep on going right across and I'll see you when I'm done. All right, we got the decoupage part done and I'm kind of liking it. So it still has to dry, but, um, but I think um, I think it turned out pretty good. So now that's going to dictate the next step of where I go. Um, I'm still thinking that I'm going to probably either do gold or silver on the trim. Um, I just quite haven't decided yet um, which way to go. And obviously, whatever way I do go, we'll paint that lock mechanism uh, to match. So... That's it for the moment. Day four is done and in the books.